Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Arabic of the Quran series. Today we'll be doing lesson number one, the three kinds of words. In Arabic, there are three kinds of words. This means that any word you see in the Quran will be one of these kinds. A word in Arabic can be ism, it can be a fa'il, and it can be a harf. A word can be ism, fa'il, and harf. I promise these are the only three words you're going to learn today. These are the only three Arabic words you're going to learn today. And in these three words, all the other words will fit in. This is ism, this is fa'il, and this is harf. And now we're going to see what each of them actually mean. So we are going to learn about harf now. Harf, as I said, is one of the types of words in Arabic. Now what is harf? Harf is a word that makes no sense unless a word comes after it. A harf is a word that makes no sense unless a word comes after it. Example, to, in, and. To, in, and. Now you're going to ask me why I didn't give you Arabic examples. That is because today we are not going to focus on examples. This isn't a vocabulary building session. No, today we are just going to focus on grammar topics and then from there we are going to expand our vocabulary. Got it? So for example, if I tell you two, it doesn't make sense. Two is a word, but it doesn't make sense. If I say to the house or to the supermarket or to the garden, then it will be making sense. Similarly, if I say in, it makes no sense. If I say in the house, in the drawer, now it's making more sense. Same goes with the word and. So what is harf? Harf is a word that makes no sense unless there's a word after it. Now it's fa'il. What is fa'il? Fa'il is a word that is stuck in the past, present or future. Fa'il is a word that has tense. It is a tense word. Now when I tell, of ten when I tell tense, many of you will think of verb. Yeah, fa'il can be a verb, but Fail is much more than a verb. Why is it much more than a verb? We're going to learn that in future lessons. That's not that's not our that's not our concern right now. Our concern is just the definition, understanding the definition. Fail is a word that is stuck in a past, present, or future. Fail is a word that has a tense. For example, ran. It's a past word. Eat, present, will go, future. So what is fail? Fail is a word that has a tense. It is a word that is stuck in past, present, or future. You have learned the easy ones. Now it's time for the hardest one. This one is ism. This, can, this is the majority of words in Arabic. The majority of words in Arabic is ism. If you open a book, in, if you open a page in the Quran, at least 80% of that page will be having ism. They are all ism. Okay, so the longest, the longest majority will have the longest definition. So what is the definition? An ism is a word that is a name. Name includes both animals or human beings. That's why it shows Abdullah and lion. All this, this all is included in names. It can be Abdullah or it can be a lion. Or it is a place. Place, you know place. Germany, Asia, Australia, all these are places. Thing. This also, you know, it's notebook, laptop, desk, house, all these are things. Now comes something new, idea. Idea is basically something that you cannot touch. For example, if I tell laptop, I can touch my laptop. If I tell books, I can touch the books. But if I tell something less abstract, like, like education, education, can you feel education? Can you touch education? No, right? That's why it is an idea. It's a concept. That's why I told shun, the shun words, the words that end with shun, like education, um, many other words like after education. All these shun words are usually ideas. Okay? And then there are gerunds. If you pay attention in English class, you will learn that gerunds are words, they are verbs, but are used as nouns. Like, I, for example, I like swimming. Now, what is the verb in the sentence? I like swimming. What is the verb in the sentence? The verb is like, but there's also swimming. So swimming in this case is a noun, right? That's what gerunds are. They are verbs that have ing that are like nouns, that are used like nouns. For example, I say, I enjoy cooking or I go out for, I go out driving. That also is a noun. All these cook, driving, all these are nouns. And these are known as gerunds. 
Next comes adjective. Again, this is much more easier. Idea is the hardest part. You get idea, you know everything else. Adjective uh, something that describes a noun. You learn this in your English class. Something that describes a noun. That that is a big that is a big house. That is a sad girl. This is a white paper. All these are adjectives. Colors included. Adjectives. After that, it's the adverbs. This describes this is a word that describes a noun. This word describes no sorry, this is a word that describes a verb. Adverb is a word that describes a verb. The LY words, you learn this in English class. Slowly, happily, sadly, all these are adverbs. And one more is of course fast. We can't tell fastly. We don't tell that. We told he ran fast. And we can tell he ran slowly. That's why it is an adverb. And then there's more. Yes, an ism can be a place, thing, name, idea, adjective, adverb, and more. This more we are not going to learn that yet. We are not. We are not. We just know that there is more, but we'll not learn about it yet. Just understand that there is more. It is name, place, thing, idea, adjective, and adverb, and more. Got it? There is more to this. The ism is not just this much. There is more than that. Again, I want to go back to idea because idea is the hardest part. Many people don't get idea. Idea is an abstract thing, anything that's abstract. For example, um, emotions, happiness. Happiness is an abstract thing. Anger. You can say it's angry. That's an emotion. But anger itself, it's abstract. Okay? Sadness. That also is abstract. So these are ideas. Ideas are things that we cannot touch. We cannot feel them like physically with our five senses. We cannot feel them. We cannot touch them. We cannot, we cannot like, they are in our imagination. You can use the word like justice. That's also an idea. Liberty, freedom, justice. We learned this in our history books. All these are ideas. Okay? All right. So now we learn about ism, we learn about fail, and we learn about harf. Quick revision. What is an ism? Ism is a name. Name includes person or animal. Place, thing, idea. Idea is an abstract concept. Adjective, adverb, and more. We are not going to forget. We are going to just know that there is more, but we will not understand what is more yet. Okay? That's an ism. What is a harf? Harf is a word that makes no sense unless a word comes after it. For example, to, and, in, all the prepositions or the conjunctions you learned. If you pay attention in your English class, you will know what preposition and conjunctions are. Then there is verb. What is not verb? There is fail. What is fail? Some people call it verb, but it's more than a verb. It's a word that is stuck in a past, present, or future. It has a tense. Great. Now let's try finding the type of word. Of course, we are not going to find the type of all words. We can't do that. It's, there's no way we can do that. But at this level, what do we know about the differences between ism and feral and harf? How can we, if we look at a word in some book, how can we know whether, what is that? So some pointers are, does it have a tanween? This is the easiest giveaway. If some word has a tanween, remember un and in, if some word has, if some word has a tanween, then it's an ism. If some word has a tanween, then it is what? It is an ism. Does it have al in the beginning? This al. Remember as salam, al kitab. Remember the huruf al shamsi, huruf al khamri. This is what you're talking about. The al in the beginning. If it has an al in the beginning, it is an ism. So tanween ism. Al ism. Is it ending with a sukoon? Now is the important part. Ism does not end with sukoon. Even if you're, for example, if you're in ayah, you will know that many times we stop at the end of the ayah, we put sukoon on it. But that doesn't mean that the word has sukun in it. That's not true. We are adding a sukun whereas it originally has something else. So if a word originally has a sukun, then it's not an ism. A sukun means it's not an ism. How many letters it's having? This is also an important point. An ism generally, generally has three, three letters in it. Anything that has it can have more than three letters, obviously, but anything that has less than three letters is not an ism. Anything that has less than three letters is not an ism. It's most likely a harf, and it can be a fail too, but it's definitely not an ism. Got it? So again, 
a tanween or an al means it's an ism sukun it cannot be an ism original sukun not we are adding sukun to add to stop at the end of the ayah not that the original sukun that means it is not an ism how many letters less than three less than three let me write that it is important three okay there is three less than three less than three what is it if it's less than three it is a har it can be a fail but it's most likely a harf got it less than three what is it it's a harf most likely generally most likely it's a harf okay so now let's apply that and uh, so the first word is babun then means straight up we know that it's an ism we don't know what it means i don't want to teach the vocabulary but straight up we know that it's an ism that's all we know assalamu assalam can you see the al there the al means what it is an ism au au means what first look at it it has a sukun so we already know that it's not an ism plus it is less than three how do we know it's less than three there's a hamza and a wow no other letter this means that it's most probably a harf and yes it is a harf then after that comes lan lan lam noon again two letters sukun definitely not an ism most probably an harf and in this case it is a harf okay so i hope this was easy for you i know we learned a lot of new concepts just go through the video again and again until you understand and memorize the definitions the definition of ism fa'il and harf are extremely important this is like the basis of all arabic words okay so memorize these definitions and if you have any questions please be sure to comment below i'll be happy to answer them thank you